Hello, and welcome to this episode of Aviation Concepts, where we're going to talk about what causes the left-hand turning tendencies of aircraft. So there are generally four different things that contribute to the left-hand turning tendencies of aircraft, and they're particularly pronounced in aircraft that have a propeller on the front of the aircraft, and where the propeller is spinning in a clockwise direction, which is most propeller-driven aircraft that I know about. Left-hand turning tendencies also tend to be a little bit more prevalent in aircraft that have a higher angle of attack when they're moving at slow speeds, so tailwheel aircraft are particularly susceptible. So the first contributing factor to a left-hand turning tendency of a propeller-driven aircraft is the torque of the propeller. So if you think back to high school and you think back to your high school physics classes, Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So if you have your propeller spinning in a clockwise motion, you're going to have torque going the opposite direction. Basically, the engine driving the propeller clockwise is creating a, an adverse force counterclockwise. All of that force is going to make it want to spiral to the left. It's going to make it want to kind of bank to the left. But since the aircraft is sitting on the ground, all of that force goes into the contact point with the ground, which is your left wheel. Now that you're getting this added weight, this added force on the left wheel, it's going to increase the friction of the wheel against the ground. And the net effect is almost going to be as if you're adding a slight amount of braking action to the left-hand side of the plane. So that added friction, that kind of implied braking motion on the left-hand side of the plane, is going to kind of gently pull the plane to the left. And you correct for that by adding right rudder, which will turn the tail wheel or the nose wheel in the direction that you want to go, in this case to the right. It'll slightly offset that increased friction on the left-hand tire. Now the second contributing factor to left-turning tendency is the spiraling slipstream. If you think about each propeller blade as its own little miniature wing, they're spinning through the air clockwise, and that's producing forward lift, which is also essentially pushing the air backwards and around the plane fuselage. The air that's going backwards doesn't go backwards in a straight motion. It goes backwards in the same direction that the propellers are spinning. So you actually get a clockwise slipstream going around the fuselage of the aircraft. And as that spiraling slipstream gets to the back of the plane, it starts hitting the tail. And it starts pushing the tail to the right. And that net effect is the aircraft wants to yaw to the left. Now the third force that we're going to talk about is called P-factor. And basically what it is, is it's asymmetric loading of the propeller. If we go back to the wing analogy, and you see that each propeller blade is almost shaped like a wing, and each wing is producing lift, you would be thinking, well, if everything is producing lift, they're all shaped the same. So they should all be producing the same amount of lift. You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? If we look at the angle that the propeller makes with the relative wind, as you're sitting here on the runway and you start adding power and you're starting to slowly kind of move down the runway, the propeller is pointing up into the air. What this means is that the blades coming down on the right hand or the clockwise side of the propeller are actually attacking the air. They have a higher angle of attack into the relative wind than the ones on the counterclockwise side or the left hand side. So the higher angle of attack results in a slightly higher amount of lift on the downward side of the propeller than on the upward swinging side of the propeller. And again, that creates more lift on the right hand side, which creates a little bit more of a right hand thrust, which is going to kind of push the airplane to the left. Now the fourth force is called gyroscopic precession. The propeller in essence is just a spinning disc. And if you go back to physics class again, you might remember that if you have a gyroscope or if you have a spinning disc and apply a force to it, that force manifests 90 degrees from the point at which it's being applied. So in the case of a propeller that starts out kind of angled up, as the tail of the aircraft starts to raise and the propeller kind of moves forward, we're actually applying a force to the top of the propeller. So that force being applied to the top of the propeller is going to be felt 90 degrees, but in the direction that the propeller is spinning or the gyroscope is spinning. So in this case, this is just an additional force on the right hand side of the propeller that's gonna be kind of shifting the airplane to the left as you roll down the runway. So if you've ever tried flying the TF-51 or the P-51 Mustang in DCS World and you are, are noticing that the plane just wants to veer to the left constantly, and it's it's got a really strong left-hand turning tendency, all of these forces are being simulated. And as you can imagine, the more power you introduce into this system, the more left-hand turning tendency you're going to get. So this is why at lower RPMs, if you're just kind of rolling down the, the runway or taxiing, you don't have as much left turning tendency. Whereas if you're sitting at a stop at the end of the runway and then you apply full power, you've got 1700 horsepower just kind of driving the plane over to the left hand side. And you'll notice as you take off in the P-51, the plane wants to 
bank to the left, and this is primarily due to the torque of the engine, and you'll have to counter that with right aileron. Well, thanks for watching another aviation concept video. I hope this video was helpful. If you found it useful or helpful or informative, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I've included a link to an article uh, from boldmethod.com in the description below that goes over uh, a lot of these forces that kind of contribute to left-hand turning tendencies in a bit more detail. And they've got some great pictures that illustrate these concepts as well. So definitely check them out. And they've got a YouTube channel as well, and I'll probably link it here somewhere in the video. And in any case, fly safe, and I'll see you in the next video.